Hello everyone. Welcome back to day eight of Mule for in-depth training by Seo Prasad Valuru. So I hope you have completed the day eight video consuming restful web services. If not, please go and see in week two playlist. You can see day eight. Fine. In this lecture, we are going to understand how to consume. SOAP web services. Okay. So we are not going to expose right now. We're going to consume an existing SOAP web service. I have developed a SOAP web service already. Um, I have developed it using Java and Spring. And this is a jar file which contains the code. And to start this, I have created a bat file. Um, here is the Java command. Uh, I'm executing Java space hyphen jar and passing some arguments internally, which will be used. And the server port will start on 6060. The base path is slash SOAP. So to start my SOAP web service, I just click on SOAP.bat. But if you are using a Linux machine or a Mac machine, just open this, uh, edit this file and copy this command and execute it at your terminal. So this will start our uh, SOAP web service. Yes, you can see Tomcat started on port 6060. So what I will do is I just go to localhost 6060 slash WS slash products.wisdl. If I give, this is the wisdom for my SOAP web service. If you observe this wisdom, how many operations are there in this port type? There is an operation called as get all products, add a product, get products by name. So firstly, to understand how to consume, let me consume it using SOAP UI. So I'll open my SOAP UI. If you have seen my earlier video about SOAP web services, by this time, you should be having SOAP UI installed. Otherwise, just Google and uh, download SOAP UI and install it. I have installed SOAP UI already. I opened it. Now, uh, I want to consume my SOAP web service. I'll click on this create new SOAP project. Then I just have to give the URL of my wisdom. Okay. So I'll copy this URL of the wisdom and give it here. Okay. From the visual file name, it identified the project name. That's OK. I'll click on OK. So this will load the visual and it will show me the operations. Now, there is a simple operation, get all products. If I click on this request one, it will generate a sample SOAP page develop. If you see to consume this get all products, what I need to part pass as part of body, the XML get all products request belong into this DOM namespace. What is this DOM namespace? Here it is defined according to the visual. This is my namespace. So if I just pass this XML in SOAP body and make a request, I'll get the response. Let us see in SOAP UI, I'll consume it. I'll click on this run button or the play button. I got the response, but I want to see the XML. Yep, this is the response inside SOAP Enola, SOAP body. I have get all products response. And you can see products under that product. How many products are there? There are six products from product with ID one to six. So this is how I made a request to get all products in the SOAP body. I have to pass this XML. Okay. Now, if I expand get products by name, mm, here to consume get products by name, what this uh, SOAP UI will do <coughs> actually, it will make a post request to this URL, endpoint URL. And in the post body, it will send this envelope. Inside envelope, the SOAP body should be like this. The root tag must be get products by name request belonging to this DOM namespace. And we should pass a name by
which we want to search. Suppose if I pass HP and give a request. So if I click on XML, yes, I got get products by name response as a tag inside it. Products tag, and there is only one HP product. Suppose if I search by name Mac, uh, now if I see, I'll be getting products who have name Mac. Okay. So I'm able to get products by name. I'm able to consume products by name. So how to add a product in the SOAP body? This is XML which is required. And this add product request should contain the product details. If I pass all the details and run, it will add the product as well. So till now, we understood how to consume the SOAP web service using Postman. Let us see how to do the same using uh, Mule. Very simple. I will just create a new Mule project and give a name. Consume SOAP. Okay. Fine. First of all, I need the visual file to be kept under SRC main resources. So I'll stop the server if it is running. Yeah. So under SRC main resources, I need to have the visual file. It's a good practice to keep your visual file, whatever you are consuming, under your SRC main resources. So this is the visual which is accessible at this URL. I want to save it. Save as on desktop. I want to save it as products.visdal. Hey, remember if I just click on save, the file name will be saved as products.visdal.xml. I don't want to save it as XML type. So if I keep this name inside double quotes, it will save as visdal. Save. Let us see on desktop. Mm, is that products? Yes. Products.wisdom. If I open, this is the same thing. Now, I'll copy this wisdom file and then paste it inside SRC main resources. So I have the wisdom file in my SRC main resources. Fine. I'll close all. Now, in this file, I want to consume SOAP web service. So I have to add a module called as web service consumer module. So I'm clicking on this add modules button. It will show me all the modules. I'll drag this web service consumer to the left panel inside the mule palette. So this is added into the project. If you observe the pom.xml, mm, by default, as you have observed earlier, HTTP connector and Mule sockets connector will be there. Now you can see Mule WSC connector. WSC stands for Web Service Consumer. That is added as a dependency here. So if you just add a module, automatically the module specific dependency will be added in form.xml. Maven will download it. And you can see that Web Service Consumer is added to the project as well. Now, under Web Service Consumer module, there is only one component called as consume by using which we can consume. So um, I dragged and dropped consume. I have to configure the Web Service Consumer connector configuration. I can directly click on plus and do that. But to follow the best practice, I'll create another file, globals dot xml and in the global element i'll click on create and i'll search for web service consumer config okay i'll give the name as products so consumer config name should be very should be actually understandable just by seeing the name, I should be able to understand what it is for. Now, I have to give the visual location. My visual is in class path, right? So I just have to give here products dot visual.
and press a tab. So once I press tab, automatically this any point studio will read the wisdom and now you can see the service port address everything is read from the wisdom and they got populated here right actually in one wisdom if you have understood um, my soap video if you have gone through the soap video you will know that inside one wisdom i could have described multiple services so which service to consume i can select from the drop down but right now in this visual, uh, there is only one service described. So you can see only one. And one service could be deployed on multiple ports, right? So you can see all the ports in this drop down. But right now, according to this visual, there is only one port. And this is the address, the endpoint address. So I'll click on OK. The global element is configured. Now, here for this consume component, I can select this as a connector configuration. Now, if I select the drop down, get all products, you can see the operation get all products, all the operations are visible. So basically, the AnyPoint Studio has read the metadata from the visual and understood all the operations, and it is shown. Okay. Now, to consume this get all products, what should be sent as part of body? Mm, what should be sent according to the SOAP UI? This is the XML which we need to send. As this XML does not contain any dynamic values, I just copy this and paste it here. Hey, this, I don't want it to be an expression. I will switch on to literal mode. Normal. But what is this DOM, the namespace? I need to copy that also. So I'll go here and I'll copy this XML NS colon DOM. Copy. And I have to give the namespace declaration here. So whenever I am consuming this operation, get all products, what should be going as part of body? This is the string, this is the XML which I want go as part of body and as this xml does not contain any dynamic part i can actually hard core it here now when you are invoking the soap operation if you want to pass any soap headers soap attachments you can pass them here if you want these values to be dynamic select effects and you have to write a data weave expression for automatically generating whatever you want Right now, I don't want to pass any headers, any attachments. That's all. Only in the body, I want to send this XML. That's all. I've configured my consume component to consume this operation. OK, for this flow, I'll give a good name, get all products. OK. And here, I'll give the name of this component, consume get all products just by seeing the name we should be able to identify fine this contains a logic to get all products and in the source there is nothing so this is a private flow right i want it to be like that now in another flow i'll drag and drop http listener and i'll configure this flow to be the main OK, then I want to configure the listener to listen on our normal port 8081. So I'll go to globals, create HTTP, OK, 8081. Let it be the default. Then coming to this listener, I'll give the path as slash soap products something anything i can give i give soap products so whenever request comes to slash soap products i want this main flow to get invoked so i configured it then when the control comes here i want to invoke get all products so i'll go to favorites and drag and drop flow reference and select get all products and 
remember the best practice whenever you are using a flow reference make sure that the display name will reflect the same so that on the ui the display name tells what this flow reference is doing it is calling get all products okay let us see if i will get a response or not i am running this application and i'll try to consume this main flow using um, so i'll just give a request to local host 8081 slash soap products okay give a request okay still the server is getting started let us wait for a few more seconds for this server new runtime to get started Okay, so deployed. Now I'll give a request. Okay, I got the XML. And what is the MIME type actually? It is like a .java, application slash Java. So basically it is displayed as a string in Java. Oh, I want to extract only the value inside the body. This is XML, the body value is an XML, right? I want to extract it and display it as an XML. So what I can do is I can actually uh, drag and drop a transform message component after this consume. And I want the output to be in, uh, let us say, XML format. And uh, here I want to write payload. If you see to the left side, of transform message component there is consume component and this consume component is already configured to consume get all products so if i drag and drop a transform message component after consume component see it is showing the metadata input metadata so the transform message is able to sense the input metadata based on the component on the left side so as this component is configured to consume get all products according to the visual it is able to identify okay the output after consume component will contain body body will contain get all products response and that will contain products and that will contain multiple products so um i want to say payload dot body so payload dot body will be the get all get all products response so I want the value of payload body, which is nothing but this get all products response. I want it and I want to display it in XML. So I've configured it. I will save it. Let it be redeployed. Okay. It's getting redeployed. Good. I'll clear the console. Now let me consume. Here, did you see it as an XML? get all products response and you can see headers the content type is application slash xml right so now you consumed get all products so you got all products as xml now if i just want it to be converted to json simply i'll configure it as application slash json let us see after redeployment, uh, let us see whether I'll get output as JSON or not. Still, it is getting deployed. We'll just have to wait. Yep, redeploying. Fine. Now, if I give a request, I got the response as JSON. That's fine. We'll see more on transformations later. I just have to configure. The output as application class json i'll get as application slash json that's fine now i want to consume another operation get products by name i know that to consume get products by name i have to pass name which is dynamic so mm, i have to somehow create this xml dynamically so there are two ways to create the xml dynamically one is i'll create a template file because in this xml most of the content is same except name i can create a template xml file let me 
do the first approach. So what I will do is I'll create a new other uh, under XML. I will select XML file next. I'll give the name as get products by name get products by name request okay finish so i want it to contain this xml and this uh, dom namespace the prefix is dom i have to give the value for it so i'll copy this namespace from here paste it and in this this name value has to be dynamic in a template you'll have mostly static content with dynamic values okay now i want to write a mule or data wave expression data wave expression whenever you write it has to be in hash square bracket like this then i'm expecting from attributes dot query params dot product name i'm expecting a query parameter called as product name and i have written this expression now i have a template file what i want is i want to actually read this template file in this template if there are any expressions those must be evaluated and this evaluated value must be set as body. So how to do it? Let me show you step by step. For this, I will drag and drop one more flow with consume component. And here I will select the operation as get products by name. Now, if you see the payload, the body is set as payload. That means before the consume component, I should set the payload to be that XML as per the template XML file. So if you're having a template XML file, if you want to load the template and uh, in the template, if there are any expressions, if they have to be evaluated and then payload has to be set, then there's a component called as parse template. So what this parse template can do is we can pass a file name. I'll pass the file name as this one. So better I will actually um, refactor, rename. I want to copy this so that I will not make any spelling mistakes. So here in the location, I'm giving the file name dot XML. This is a template file. Right? Okay. So if I just write like this, parse template, what it will do, it will load the given template XML file. Template can be anything. It is XML in this case. It will read the template file, whatever is given. And uh, in the template file, if there are any expressions, they will be evaluated. And this content will be set as payload. Okay. That is what is parse template. Many people do a mistake when uh, using parse template, they select this dot 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 and select the XML. You may face errors. So actually, the good practice because if you select, it will select the entire path like this SRC main resources. If you select this, okay, actually, right now it is automatically taking it, but sometimes I have seen it will give the entire absolute path like C drive slash something. It is not a good practice always it is better to keep your file inside the class path that means src main resources and then give just the name when i have done it now uh, from the main flow what i will do is i will just delete this flow reference and then i will use another flow reference to point to the other flow. Hey, I forgot to rename this flow. Always um, give good name. Get 
products by name and here also uh, for this consume component i'll give consume get products by name it's always a good practice okay here for parse template also parse input xml okay fine now from the main flow i want to actually hit i want to actually call this flow reference so i'll select um, get products by name and also i'll give the display name the same fine now let us check uh, whether it will invoke or not now when i'm invoking get products by name we are expecting a query parameter right what is the query parameter we are expecting product name so i'll use this url question mark product name is equals to mac so i gave a request okay i guess this is still getting deployed oh i didn't save it i will save it let it be rebuilt and redeployed okay now it got redeployed now if i give a request i got of course as a plain string in uh, java format but that's okay um get products by name response and i got the products mac products fine again in this one also i'll drag and drop a transfer message and i want the output to be in json format now um you can see it to the left side of transform the transform message is able to sense the metadata on the left side this is called as data sense so by using data sense it is able to identify the structure of uh, the input so what i want is here i want to write payload dot body maybe if i give dot uh, get products by name response actually the tag name get products by name response is belonging to a namespace according to the xml so if i set the namespace um oh uh, ns tag is written duplicate right it looks like that but actually there's a bug in any point studio you just have to keep a cursor outside and place it again here you can see that there is a namespace declaration here and uh, whenever you are actually selecting a tag belonging to the namespace this is the syntax don't worry about all this um, you'll understand more about transformations in our next in detail section of database right now don't worry i just selected the tag name belonging to a namespace like this fine so i saved it uh, hopefully now i should be able to get the response yes i got json and you can see the product name only contains mac i got only mac products so i am able to search by name okay but in the main flow what i want is i want to conditionally route the request to either get products by name or get all products just like how we have done in our earlier lecture consuming rest so i drag and drop choice router just like earlier very simple right choice and i have two routes so i'll drag and drop one flow reference here and drag and drop one more flow reference carefully here inside choice yes i've got two routes now in the first route i'll configure the flow reference to point to get all products i'll give the display name also accordingly and in the second one i'll make it to point to get products by name i'll configure the display name also accordingly now when do you want to go to get all products if there is no query parameter called as product name i want to go to all products so i will write the same here i'll write an expression in the when 
the expression should evaluate to true or false. So I'll write attributes dot method is equals to get if it is a get request and attributes dot query params dot product name is equals to null if both conditions are satisfied then i want the control to go into first route i'll copy this command i'll copy this expression and i'll select second when and here i will write the reverse method equals to get but product name query parameter not null not null so if both the conditions are not satisfied, that means if the method is post or something, it will come to default. And here, I just wanted to drag and drop a set payload. And I will set the payload as in. So just like I have done for rest, I have used choice to route the requests. Let us see if it works or not. It looks like there's an error here. There's an error here. If you see any red marks, go to problems and see what is the problems here. The problem is gone after compilation. There was no problem. So maybe sometimes it will take a little bit more time. Hmm. But here I can see red mark. I'll click on configuration XML. Do I see anything? Nothing, right? So again, it is showing errors. What is it saying? Fail to resolve expression attributes on element flow. On element flow. Fail to resolve message attributes type expression null on element flow custom metadata. Here. What is it saying? Here it is showing an error. What is it? Data sensor. What is it? Fail to resolve. A met message attributes. Flow. So actually, this is looking fine. The flow names. Why are they giving error? Flow name is get all products, that's fine. And this flow name, all flow names are correct. But it is giving me something like a problem. Let me go to XML and check. Flow name is fine and flow name is fine. Everything looks fine. Hmm. Strange. Now, let me try to run this, stop it, and then start it again. It is saying errors exist. Let me launch and see if the deployment will be still successful or not. Sometimes any point studio behaves like this. Even though it shows an error, I feel like everything is fine here. Let me actually run and see if it will give errors during deployment. It is deploying the application. Let us see now. Hmm. Looks like application got deployed successfully. No errors. Let me try if I got I get expected response. I'm passing product name. Hmm. I got the products, only Apple products. If I don't pass, I should get all products, get all products response. Yes, all products. So everything is working fine. But in my studio, it is showing an error message. So actually, this might be a problem with any point studio. Whenever you face such things, normally we feel that we have done some mistake. It might be a problem with any point studio. Just restarting your any point studio 
will save you a lot of time. Let us see after restarting, will it still show me that error? Let us just observe. Yes, now you can see the project has been built again successfully. Now there are no errors after restarting. So actually, whenever you are working with any point studio, it will sometimes show that there is an error, but there might not be any error. Okay. Fine. Now you understood how to consume uh, SOAP web service. But I told you here that if the consume component requires a dynamic XML, what am I doing right now? The body, I'm configuring it as payload. And I was using parse template pointing to the template XML file. In this template XML file, Wherever dynamic content is there, I wrote an expression. This is one way. Okay. But there is another way to consume a web service which requires dynamic data. So what I will do is I will delete this parse template. I will just drag and drop transform methods component here before consume component. And uh, let us see here automatically for the right side to the right side of transform message there is consume component right i should see the metadata of the output hey right now i can see only input and this uh, this one right i will select this icon to show output metadata also here you can see in the output metadata it is automatically identifying like Input metadata is empty. It is not able to identify because to the left side of transform message, there is nothing. To the right side, it is able to sense the metadata based on the consume component. And right side output should look like this. Fine. Now I have to give the dynamic value for name. Somehow I need to write an expression which will convert the input to this XML. So it will double click on it. See? This is the data view expression which will generate the required XML. And for name, I'm expecting it from header. So attributes dot query params dot product name. So as string. Okay, fine. I gave the expression which will be generated automatically. So I'll give default empty. Fine. Now uh, I wrote this expression. This expression is data wave expression, which will actually give the required XML. The root tag is get products by name request. It contains name, right? So I'm able to generate this XML di dynamically without parse template. Good. Fine. This is a way. This is another way. Now, there is some best practice which you need to understand. Is this a private flow? Yes. Here, whenever I am writing an expression, I'm getting an error. What? What is the error? Actually, here I am writing an expression specific to HTTP, right? And in this private flow, if you are writing anything specific to HTTP, this flow is not really reusable. It is expecting something from HTTP. So the best practice is to actually replace it with a variable where where's dot p name I will say. So what this flow is expecting, it is expecting a variable called as pname. So here, whenever you're calling get products by name flow, before that, you can actually set variable, drag it before. And here, you can write an expression. Because in this main flow, you know that you have HTTP listener, you can write an expression 
using HTTP. I'm setting the variable name P name and the value is attributes dot query params dot P name. Sorry, actually, what is the query parameter I'm expecting? Product name, right? This is a query parameter I'm expecting from the input. So product name, I think this is the same name I used here also. Product name in choice. Yep. Fine. So before calling the actual flow, I'm setting the variable and calling. Now in this flow, um, there are no problems at all right now because this flow is expecting a variable that's okay but don't write an expression specific to any protocol because there is no source there is a private flow if you write any expression which is specific to any protocol then this private flow is not really reusable all right so that's a thing you need to understand fine we are done with how to consume rest apis now after this there is a lab exercise which you need to work on. So in my Git repository, I have day eight consuming SOAP app service. Here I have detailed, I have given you everything in detail, how to start a SOAP app service, how to consume it, everything. Whatever I have told, I want you to practice this. Okay. Then at the end, I gave a bonus step, which you have to do. There are some web services at this exposed publicly. There is one web service. I want you to write flows to consume this web service as well. Okay, follow this instructions and complete the entire ex exercise as well as you consume another, another web service also by following this instructions. That's all. I will see you in next lecture.